problem. This is a sore loser impeachment process. 70% of the people who favor impeachment favored it. Welcome back to Power Hours Tactical. As I mentioned in our last video, we'll be talking about uh, new developments within the uh, whole uh, bogus presidential impeachment inquiry. But before we go on, um, I'd like to just mention that uh, the dog, the military dog that uh, went into the um, ISIS compound to chase after uh, al-Baghdadi, uh, before his uh, demise, uh, the dog's identity was finally declassified. Uh, the, the dog's name is uh, Conan. Uh, he was actually named after the comedian Conan O'Brien, uh, which I'm a fan of. The dog is apparently uh, reportedly uh, doing very well, recovering well. So uh, that is, uh, I'm so glad to hear that. And I'm sure all of you are as well. And thanks for uh, those of you who actually sent uh, uh, prayers his way. So here's a crazy uh, news before we actually really dive in. Uh, Susan Rice. So everybody knows her, right? The former National Security Advisor to uh, President Barack Obama has actually came on the face of Face the Nation um, interview and said that President Donald Trump should have consulted with Obama before killing Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. So President Trump didn't inform a lot of the, uh, uh, any actually pretty much any of the Democratic uh, Congress people about the raid going after uh, al-Baghdadi. Uh, and when he was asked about it, he said that he didn't do that because he was he feared that there may uh, be a leak, and that would danger the lives of uh, our troops. So Rice, when she was asked about it, uh, she said that okay, you know that's his prerogative and whatnot, but uh, Trump should have consulted with his predecessor <laughs> about the raid for some crazy logic. Another clear example of uh, self-important uh, and entitled elitist mentality of the left, which enables them, obviously, to do the types of things that they do, such as uh, uh, vote rigging, even within their own party, against one of their own, Bernie Sanders. Now, I'm not sure how many of you have uh, read up on this, or, or have been watching this, but last year the political process, election process, um, exposed Americans to more corruption and uh, vote rigging uh, than at any time in American's history. Uh, now, a recent lawsuit uh, has exposed that this corruption and fraud is actually standard operating procedure at the Democratic uh, National Committee. So all the donors uh, that donated money to uh, Bernie Sanders' campaign that were backing Bernie Sanders had do also donated a lot of money to uh, the DNC. Uh, those are the folks that are actually uh, bringing this lawsuit against uh, the DNC and also its former chairperson, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Um, and uh, it's, it gets a lot more ridiculous. So the, the DNC's lawyer, uh, his name is Bruce Spiva, um, had actually told the Florida's, Florida courts um, the other day, and, and I quote, we have voluntarily decided that, or we could have voluntarily decided that, look, we're going into back rooms like they used to and smoke cigars and pick the candidates that way, unquote. Um, these were actually the words that came out of the lawyer that's defending the Democratic National uh, Committee. Uh, 
the lawsuit uh, was originally fi filed in June of last year. So the lawsuit was actually fi brought uh, to court against the uh, DNC and also the uh, the former uh, chairperson, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, um, by the donors for the Sanders uh, campaign. Uh, people... People paid a lot of money in, rely, in relying on the understanding that the primary election for the uh, Democratic nominees in, in 2016 was going to be a fair and also impartial one, right? So the plaintiff's lawyer, Jared Beck, uh, said that, and that's not just, you know, uh, uh, just the rhetoric, uh, but it actually says that. And the Democratic National Committee's own charter actually says that, that it has to, and they strive for uh, the fair and impartial uh, uh, selection process, nominating process for their nominee. And during this whole ordeal, uh, DNC and the former chair, Schultz, and all of them are saying the same thing. What they're saying is they actually, DNC actually, has a legal right to rig their own election. Um, why am I bringing this up when uh, I am about to bring up the whole impeachment inquiry process? Is the fact that if the DNC, the Democratic Party, if they are willing to do this against their own candidate, Bernie Sanders, in this case, what makes you think that they wouldn't do that to a candidate from a, another party outside of the DNC? Uh, so here's the recent article. House Democrats on Tuesday introduced a resolution to formalize their impeachment inquiry and adopt rules to govern the proceedings. Following sustained complaints by congressional Republicans, and the White House that the inquiry hasn't followed past precedent. Democrats say the resolution isn't needed under the Constitution or the law to conduct an impeachment. Its passage this Thursday, that's when the vote will occur, undercuts the White House, which has been arguing that the inquiry is illegitimate without the approval of the full House in resolution. Rebutting the White House, Pelosi writes, the Trump administration has made up this argument, apparently out of whole cloth, in order to justify its unprecedented cover-up. However, she notes, we are taking this step to eliminate any doubt as to whether the Trump administration may withhold documents, prevent witness testimony, disregard duly authorized subpoenas, or continue obstructing the House of Representatives. And because they signed this resolution justifying these, if you don't follow the orders of the inquiry, then you could charge that person, including, but not limited to the president, of obstructing justice. Or, at least that's what she thinks. So they're voting to sign this resolution. And when uh, Pelosi was asked by a reporter, here's what she said. No, no, it's not an impeachment resolution. It's a resolution for impeachment inquiry. The fact that the inquiries are going on right now, all the investigations are going on right now. It's a resolution acknowledging the fact that these proceedings are going on. So by signing this resolution, these questionable, uh, unethical, unfounded investigations that's been going on, she's trying to justify them by writing this resolution after the fact. Once she's done that, then she could use it to go after the White House requiring uh, President Trump of the information. This is how ridiculously desperate the left has become, the deep state. Um, you know, they, they, they have no regard for rules. Right. 
they, they slap you, slap you, slap you, slap you until you put your hand up. And then they, uh, they yell out, obstruction, you obstructed justice. So they think they're getting very smart and they think they're getting very sneaky. All it is is a blatant disregard for our constitution, laws, and you know due process in particular. So they are making up rules as they go along. Um, whenever they run into a tough spot, they change and they bring in a new rule. They just make up a new rule. And when they come to another block, they make up another rule. And they ask everyone else to follow that new rule now. Um, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to do this and repeat doing this until the White House, the president, uh, 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 calls out, you know, hey, we can't follow this anymore. We're not going to follow your new rule. That's not how the rules work uh, and then you know they can they can have the whole gotcha moment right they can say hey obstruction obstruction of justice you didn't follow the rule that's obstruction uh, dr. Kupperman filed a district court uh, or a lawsuit with the district court here in DC on Friday night asking the judicial branch in a sense to weigh in on whether his obligation is to honor a subpoena from Congress or orders from the executive branch not to testify and as of this morning that uh, lawsuit had not even been assigned to a judge so in lieu of some decision from the court the Kupperman will not be testifying so that's another uh, matter that uh, Democrats are going to yell out obstruction of justice with um, I'll tell you why it's not obstruction of justice. Congress is not higher than the White House. As they claim, which I agree, White House is not higher authority than U.S. Congress. They're equal level branch of government. Whereas Congress is telling him to show up, White House is saying that that's a bogus uh, bogus investigation. Don't go. So we have you have when you have two, like let's say your dad says to do it and your mom says not to do it. Who would you follow? You're gonna have to play your favorites, right? However, the government doesn't work that way. When equal level uh, branch of government tells you a contradicting situation, then we have a third, judicial. That's why you go to court. And a judge will then uh, decide for you. You know, uh, that's why we have the third one, to break that even uh, uh, situation. They'll to appear. They will be building a very powerful case against the president for obstruction, uh, an article of impeachment based on obstruction. That Dr. Kupperman filed in district court has no basis in law. Uh, a private citizen cannot sue the Congress to try to avoid coming in when they're served with a lawful subpoena. We expect that the court will make short shrift of uh, that argument, but nonetheless, uh, we move forward. Uh, Dr. Kupperman had testimony we believe would corroborate uh, the allegations of misconduct that other witnesses have made. Um, but we move forward uh, and we will obviously consider, as we inform Dr. Kupperman's counsel, uh, his failure to appear as evidence that may warrant a contempt proceeding against him. Shifty is what Shifty Adam does. He sees a TV camera and he runs towards it and he says different things. He's got zero credibility. He literally read a parody of a phone call that never existed on the House floor as a chair of the Intelligence Committee. No credibility. He comes as former Deputy National Security Advisor Charles Kupperman defied a subpoena and skipped his scheduled deposition today. We can infer from the White House opposition to Dr. Kupperman's testimony that they believe that his testimony would be incriminating. I frankly can't believe what I just heard. 
a member of U.S. Congress just saying, just said in that clip that there's no reason to follow uh, the, the, the court of law. Forget the court. Forget the law. He's a bad guy, so we're going to push on. We're going to push on forward. Are you kidding me? How can someone like that be even a member of Congress? impeaching of a president who was duly elected. So you're trying to cancel out these millions and millions and millions of votes that the American people have casted to elect this guy, and you want to take him out. And you don't want to go through all the processes that the court of law requires you to. And a few months before that, he said that there's plenty and plenty of evidence, actual evidence, that could prosecute and impeach this president, according to the Mueller report. Completely unfounded, just made up words. Just he's pulling these out of thin air. First of all, I really truly believe that Shifty Adam needs to get off that committee, let alone chair it. But if you're going to keep him up there, and he's going to swear somebody in for any kind of testimony in front of that committee, he should be required to swear an oath himself. With U.S. Attorney John Durham now conducting a criminal investigation in the origins of the Russia investigation, should officials who started the Russia probe be worried? I've been waiting for this moment for a couple of years now. Um, A.G. Barr. Mr. William Barr, uh, I thank you in advance for what you're about to do, and I commend you for hiring Durham, one of the best investigators and prosecutors uh, currently in existence in the U.S. As you know, he's a 35-year veteran of the department, great reputation for nonpartisanship. He was selected by... Uh, two Democratic attorney generals uh, to do sensitive investigations for them. He's a by-the-book uh, kind of guy. Uh, he's thorough and fair, and I'm confident he's going to get to the bottom of things. And, and do you expect in the IG report that we will see criminal referrals from the inspector general? And what will that mean for John Durham's uh, uh, investigation, which is now a, an out-and-out -out criminal investigation? And coincidences and the... Um, the uh, the end of the inspector general's investigation and his impending report coming at the same time as the start of John Durham uh, announcing that this is now a criminal probe um, is not a coincidence. Well, I should, I'm you know, very cur curious. It's presumably I, I guess I'm one of those uh, uh, under investigation. And, I, I, hey, and you I, just heard about this. Yes, I just uh, uh, you know, read the clip on uh, about 20 minutes ago. 20 minutes ago, really? Why? What, do, you, do you understand a motive? I, I don't. And I'm supposedly going to be interviewed by Mr. Durham mm -hmm. um, as part of this non-investigation. Ooh, that was passive-aggressive. Non-investigation? That's what you want to call it? I, because I was there, I was in the room when these decisions were made, I worked with the team that opened and initiated these cases, approved their work. Um, I know that nothing improper was done. We're also beginning to see some very disturbing emails that we hadn't seen before, or texts or emails from Peter Strzok, uh, between Strzok and, and Lisa Page, one that seems to be indicting an agency, whether that's the CIA, we're not sure, but I'm just... I am extremely, extremely happy to watch some of these guys squirm in pool of guilt. The deep state, the swamp dwellers, they're getting nervous. Clapper, Brennan, McCabe, Peter, and Page, all these guys. Oh, man. Oh, 
Don't forget Comey. Attorney General in Chicago today, where President Trump will be speaking next hour to a meeting of police chiefs. Barr telling Fox News the investigation into how the Russia probe got started is making great headway. We are waiting on the IG report, which we're fully expecting FISA abuse. And of course, last week we learned that now John Durham's investigation has turned criminal. But in the meanwhile, the question still remains. Did President Donald Trump commit an impeachable offense? Before we can answer that, we need to differentiate two different things. One is a, a political sin, something that is not a smart thing to do politically, uh, and a criminal offense, a crime. Those are two different things. You can only impeach a president if there has been a crime, crime so large and major that it's uh, a, an impeachable offense. First of all, I don't really even think uh, Donald Trump has committed a political sin even, something that, you know, doesn't look good uh, in the political arena and things like that. In fact, I believe majority of Americans would support him for uh, using a military aid or any other kind of leverage to get to the bottom of truth. Isn't that actually what we elected him to do? To defend and protect the Constitution of the United States. That's what they swear on the Bible. And what threatens our Constitution more than a rigging and, and messing around with our process of election? The very foundation of our democracy is on the election process, where we elect our own, not the rulers, not leaders, but our representatives, our Constitution, provides that. And it's the president's job, the most important job of the president, to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. And if he had used uh, some kind of leverage, such as uh, holding back the military aid to a country that uh, is crucial for that kind of investigation... I say he was doing his job. And while he is doing his job, probably better than most presidents in recent history, he's facing a mutiny. An actual mutiny, a coup d'etat, by the U.S. intelligence community. They need to impeach this president to save their skin, to keep their jobs, keep their power, but not just that, keep their lives. Treason if they're tried in the military tribunal, possible death sentence. Very possible. It's actually real. So they're fighting for their lives. Not just their position, their power, money. They're actually fighting for their lives. That's why they are able to ignore rules of law, due process, what the, what the people are saying or thinking about them. It doesn't matter to them. It's a life or death situation for them. So, in regards to this whole Ukrainian thing, a quid pro quo exchange of foreign aid for political favor? In the worst case scenario, it would be a political sin. Not a crime that is that calls for uh, an impeachment of a duly elected president. For the record, to be honest with you, I couldn't care less if there had been a quid pro quo. If this cabal of bureaucrats that, that, that dwell in the swamp, the bowels of the intelligence community, if they are able to overthrow our duly elected president, there's no future for this republic.
News, the U.S. House of Representatives will vote this week to formalize the impeachment inquiry and procedures for open hearings. That word came from Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Our Justice Department producer, Jake Gibson, had a chance to sit down with Mr. Barr to talk to him about the Durham investigation. President Trump and his team are calling it investigating the investigators. Hey, thank you, folks, for watching this video. As always, stay safe. Stay yellow, God bless you, and God bless our republic. Probably frightens that Donald Trump is innocent and the deep state is guilty. And, and when you've got Mr. Durham out there with a, an investigation that transitioned from an administrative review to a criminal investigation, that is a hat tip that there was some catalyzing event that caused the attorney general and Mr. Durham to seek uh, the ability to have that criminal process at their disposal. I also think Durham probably frightens the deep state a lot more than even the FISA review, because the Durham investigation is the investigation that goes deepest into the Obama White House. And so that's where I think you'll see people like well, Clapper and Brennan implicated. Mr. Durham, um, as part of this non-investigation. Former CIA director John Brennan uh, is, has been looked at, as well as uh, Jim Clapper, as, as possible uh, I don't want to say suspects, but possible uh, uh, targets of inf for information from John Durham. Is it, is it conceivable, as we see this turn into a criminal investigation, the origins of, of the Russia probe, uh, that one of these gentlemen uh, could be indicted? Now, Sandra, despite traveling to Italy with Durham and introducing him to officials in the U.K. and Australia, Attorney General Barr says this is John Durham's and only John. Now, last week, we learned that the investigation into the origins of the Russia probe is now criminal. Headed by U.S. Attorney John Durham out of Connecticut, it started as an administrative review back in May, but now that has changed. The president and his supporters, they say that now Barr and now Durham will have the ability to impanel a grand jury issue subpoenas and file criminal charges. Um, John Durham announcing that this is now a criminal matter is a significant development. It means that there is a reasonable indication or suspicion that crimes have occurred. Doesn't mean that he's going to charge anyone, but it does mean that he's going to impanel a grand jury to compel testimony, subpoenas uh, and people, uh, documents and people uh, to come and address the origins of this Russia investigation where a president was accused of treason, falsely accused of treason, um, by a party that paid for a fake, phony dossier. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Democrats are now unhappy right. uh, that John Durham is looking at whether or not there was a proper predicate for it. I don't believe there was.